Welcome to the Why Connect podcast. As the heartbeat of the community, the Why is a connector where people of all ages and walks of life come together to elevate their health, wellness, education, and essential life skills. Hear the stories of impact and join the authentic conversations where together we'll discover the journeys and pathways people take to connect through the Why. Now your hosts, Zarina, Robert, and Allison. Hello, friends. Serena, Robert, here we are. Our first podcast episode. (laughs) So excited. How are you all? Feeling wonderful. Absolutely. Welcome to Why Why Connect. That is the name of our podcast. And we are here today to talk about why we're doing a podcast for the YMCA of Metro Atlanta. And um, Mm -hmm. we want to start out by sharing a little bit about ourselves, a little bit about our theme moving forward this year. So I'll just get started and I'm going to ask you guys some questions if you don't mind, if I can be in that that seat. Oh my. (laughs) (laughs) No pressure, no pressure. (laughs) Excellent. Well, I want to, I think people would appreciate hearing a little bit about ourselves. So we're going to start with Robert. Robert, why don't you um, share a little bit about yourself, um, some background so we know a little more about Robert Wright. Welcome everyone. Uh, My name is Robert Wright, um, affectionately known as Rob. Um, Humble kid from Long Island, New York. Uh, Youngest of three. Um, Father is from the South, mom is uh, from Dominican Republic. So uh, somewhat of a mixed culture, grew up in a mixed culture um, in the, within the culture of New York. Um, I've been down here um, in Atlanta uh, for 30 plus years, uh, attending Morehouse. Um, one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in my life. I met some of the best people I've ever known in my life. Um, I, since being down here, um, have two beautiful daughters. Uh, one is a graduate of a uh, small liberal arts school in in Montgomery, Alabama, named Huntington College. Uh, The other one is actually a sophomore at Xavier uh, University in um, in New Orleans. Um, Oh, Bob, uh, I am a sports fanatic, everything New York. Uh, (laughs) You will often hear me talk about the Giants, so that that actually might affect my mood a little bit, depending if they're winning or losing. (laughs) <laughs> um, but uh you know obviously i've been down here for, for long enough to make atlanta my home uh i was down here for the olympics um i've been down here to see the growth of atlanta i've been down here to see the um some of the ups and downs that atlanta has gone through um and and have have had to weather that storm uh but it's been a phenomenal journey and um you know currently obviously working for the ymca uh you know it's my professional background has always been in social services um uh whether it be working with kids uh, specifically or uh adults specifically or a specific uh, population um but that's what kind of has been my driving force and has kind of fed me um, through all my years of being in Atlanta. So um, welcome and thank you for your welcome. And uh, this is something that has been just kind of eating at us and, and we just really looking forward to doing so. We're really excited about it. Well, we're gonna follow back up on a couple of nuggets that Zareen and I know about you. So I don't oh. want to miss the part about some things that you did at Morehouse that I find particularly intriguing and um, exciting. But Zarina, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about your life and and who you are? All right, let's see, where do I begin? Uh, My name is Zarina Winston. Um, I have been living in the Metro Atlanta YMCA, well, Metro Atlanta area since 1999. I'm originally from Hopewell, Virginia. And when I moved to Atlanta in 1999, I began my Y journey. 
Let's see. It's been 23 years now since I've been working for the YMCA. I've served in multiple capacities. When I first arrived here, I started off as a summer camp counselor. When the school year began, I was a site director, assistant teacher, lead teacher, lead instructional support coach. And now I'm currently a center director for the Metro Atlanta YMCA. <laughs> so I always say I've been here my whole life since I was a baby. Um, I love the YMCA. I just love it, love it, love it. Um, I have three beautiful children. Uh, my daughter, she's 19. She's at Georgia Tech. I have a 15-year-old in high school. Yes, 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 yes. And then I have a nine-year-old um, who definitely made me want to stop at number three. <laughs> <laughs> But he's a sweetheart. He's a sweetheart. Um, I actually own my own candle company called Candle Lush. Um, that is my hobby and my passion on the side, making candles. I love to exercise. Um, I love to listen to music and spending time with my family. Um, that's what I love to do most, family and friends. Um, so that's that's a little bit about me. Nice. So like you, Zarina, I have a daughter at Georgia Tech as well. Um, so I'll start there. Um, she's a senior this year, graduating in May. And then we have a senior in high school, um, a boy. I have been married 26 years, just celebrated this year. Met my husband um, in Macon, Georgia, of all places. We were working at a TV <laughs> station there. And um, we had a newsroom romance that stuck. And um, we've been living in Atlanta since, uh, I guess we moved up here in 98. Um, I have a pretty winding background. Um, I've been with the Y for about three years and I'm the chief social impact officer for the Y. And um, that means that I have the pleasure of overseeing um, strategic partnerships, volunteerism, advocacy, um, and leading the strategic planning process for the Y and kind of making sure we um, really accomplish and live out what we said we were going to do with our strategic plan. Um, so I work with a great team of people. And um, let's see, I've lived in a variety of different places, lived in um, Chicago as a child, lived in Florida, Sarasota, Madison, Wisconsin, um, Sun Valley, mm -hmm. Idaho, not a bad spot, actually. Um, <laughs> my mom still lives there. And um, my husband and I have been in um, Sandy Springs now for um, the last, um, gosh, 22 years. And wow. um, we've got three pets, two dogs and a cat. And uh, that's me. <laughs> some highlights. Um, let's talk about so. next, I think. Um, where this idea came from, you know, why, why a podcast? Because we know there are many podcasts out there, millions and millions. I think um, our producers with Produce Your Podcast, um, Tracy Forge, who leads that, says there are over 2 million podcasts in counting. Oh so why, why one more, right? Right. <laughs> why not? Why one? <laughs> well, that's a great question. Why not? Um, I'll speak to kind of where this idea came from, from, from me. Since I've been at the Y, I've noticed that we have an inordinate amount of stories that are taking place all the time with our staff, our um, members, people that we impact in the community. And it's hard to tell our story when you're doing so many things. So podcasting to me seemed like a great way to kind of go deep and to tease out all the ways the why really shows up for right. Atlanta and the country. But I didn't want to do this alone. I really felt it was important <laughs> that people join me who live and breathe and are on the front lines and you two are. So right. when, um, when I came to you, because you were recommended by your <laughs> leaders to do this, what was your first reaction? when I, I said, what do you think about this crazy idea of the podcast? <laughs> Let's start with Zarina. I know for me, first I kind of lit up and I said, wow, of course. But then I was like, wait a minute, oh no. <laughs> 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 
I'm typically more quiet and stay in my bubble unless I formed a relationship with you and we've had ongoing conversations and I kind of stay in that area, my early learning area. Um, but I also love a challenge. I love an adventure and I love to learn something new. Um, so I'm very excited about this opportunity and honored that I was asked to be a host or guest host or a co-host <laughs> just to be a part of it. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> no, you so are you, you are in that co-host seat from here on out, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and you guys are just so dynamic. And getting to know you, Robert and Allison, I'm just looking forward to this journey with you guys. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. What was your thought, Robert, when? Because uh, I, I, I asked um, Kristen McEwen, she's our chief experience officer, and I said. Mm -hmm. We really need someone who is out in our wide branches doing the heavy lifting, you know, and really <laughs> connecting with people. And she immediately said, Robert Wright. Um, again, I am humbled and honored for this opportunity as well. Um, when I first uh, was asked, it was almost as if I was being called into the principal's office. Um, uh, <laughs> Joe, <No. laughs> Joe Ambler. Joe Ambler, the executive director, uh, he called me to his office and, and I'm sitting here thinking like, oh, what did I not do? Um, did I finish the report? Did I get everything in at the time? Um, I'm just running down the list. And uh, so when I walked into his office and uh, he was like, go ahead and close the door. And I was like, oh God, what did I do? Um, uh -huh. So he kind of broke it down. Into <laughs> exactly. Um, he told me what, he, he kind of broke it down and told me what the expectation was and, and um, that I had been Violin chosen. Uh, that's a new word that I learned through this process. Yes. Violin chosen. Um, and so I was uh, immediately um, humbled and, and immediately uh, excited about this opportunity. This is well outside of my comfort zone. Um, I am somebody who enjoys good conversation and lively conversation and lively environments. Uh, but to put myself out there on stage um, is, is definitely something new to me. Um, so yeah, I, I jumped at the opportunity and didn't hesitate to say yes, um, because I knew this is something that was going to stretch me, um, beyond my own boundaries and kind of expose me to, um, new opportunities and creativity through the YMCA. Well, a little secret to our listeners. I think they both need to know that not only were you violent chosen to do this podcast, but... <laughs> Leading up to this, we had our staff conference, which we haven't had in person in goodness since 2019. And we wanted <laughs> you two to be our MCs, and you were amazing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You were. Um, you talked so about being shocked. You can say, you didn't, yeah. yeah, you yeah. can say you didn't want to take the stage, but you guys <laughs> took it and you wore it well. It was excellent. Thank you. All right. I think Thank Robert says, much. Rena, are you ready to go on stage? I said, no, you're going to have to push me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were naturals. What are you talking about? You were naturals. Yeah. So um, let's, let's pivot a minute and share with um, our folks that are listening. What are our hopes and aspirations for the podcast? What, what do we personally hope that we are able to achieve through this medium? Um, I know for me, I hope our listeners find this podcast valuable and worth their time and that we reach. I, I really want to gain a, us to gain a lot of listeners kind of tuning in and people excited about sharing their story in relation to the community and why and their why experience. Nice. What about you, Robert? I love the opportunity. I love the opportunity of giving our members a voice um, outside of the uh the locations that they're that they're currently in, um, I definitely as as Arena just said, just just have a platform to just really um, have conversations and um, discussions that are meaningful. Um, not only meaningful to us as employees, but meaningful to the members that attend. Um, there's nothing that we do in our day to day that does not have an effect on. Our members and so um the conversation has to be valuable to them not just us so I, i'm i'm excited about the opportunity of giving them a voice and, and sharing um 
sharing their voice and their stories um, and just kind of collaborating what we do and, 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 and the impact that it can possibly have throughout the city. I yeah. like that. For me, I, um, I am astounded at how many individuals the why impacts on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. I mean, from our, our, our six weeks old in our early learning centers to yeah. um, elementary school students after school in our after school programs, members of all ages in our health and wellness centers. I think about our active older adults who come to the why on a daily basis, not only for their health and wellness, but just simply to connect and yeah. um, have that community, that sense of community. And we are all, I mean, we're seeing such a reaction from two and a half years of, of really being impacted by the pandemic, this lack of connection, lack of mm -hmm. social connection, emotional connection, and um, our numbers have just been through the roof lately. Um, our enrollment's way up in early learning, families are coming back, and our members are coming back, and we have some great stories to tell. So I'm, I'm very hopeful that we'll be able to do that here. Absolutely. Yeah. How about the idea of connection? So the title of this podcast is Why Connect? You know, <laughs> the simply asking or answering that question, why connect? But literally, the why being that connection ding 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 <laughs> for you guys what does connection mean to you you know what what is that or maybe i'll start with what does that look like to you over the last two and a half years mm. connect um to me is a bond it's a, a togetherness um a team environment um all working toward the, a, a common goal um, I often tell, uh, as a wellness director at Eastlake, I often tell the wellness staff that um, our members come to the gym, members come to the Y for many different reasons. But oftentimes they stay at the Y because of the, um, the work that they're doing, the work that the coaches are doing um, and the instructors are doing and the uh, staff in, in the early learning centers are doing and the, the staff in the, the teen centers are doing. And it's a team environment. Um, again, there's nothing that we do in our day-to-day -day that does not have an effect on all of our members, um, ranging from six months to um, 80, 85 years old. So uh, without that bond, without that to get togetherness, that team environment, um, there's always going to be, you know, some cracks and some some holes uh, that things can kind of fall through. So, connect to me to me means a strong togetherness and strong bond between team members. Perfect. Absolutely. And for me, the same. And also, connection for me is conversations, having conversations, building relationships, being your own authentic self, um, being open to someone else's thoughts, opinions, and ideas. I'm so excited for the conversations to come with Why Connect podcast. Nice. And if I can get a little philosophical for a minute, um, I think we've all noticed this sense of disconnection in society. Um, we're about to head into the midterm elections, and certainly this is an apolitical forum. We will not be talking about sides. The Y does, doesn't do that. Um, but I think there is a time for the Y to show leadership in bringing different ideas together and helping create more common ground, more understanding, right. Right. Um, more intrinsic connection for the betterment of our city, mm -hmm. you know, and what we're all trying Absolutely. to do. So sorry to get all lofty there. So we are going to be winding down our podcasts each time um, by ending our episodes about everyone's why connection, like their journey. And so I'm going to ask each of you to share what led you to the why, what connected you here. Um, and then I also want to make sure I get in the part about Robert's 
Morehouse experience. Oh, yes. It's a really good story. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes. Maybe we can get a sample of that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ooh. That would be awesome. Mm. Yeah. A little illusion. <laughs> <to> that. <laughs> So, uh, Serena, what, why don't you share what brought you to the why? All right. So what brought me to the why? My uncle actually brought me to the why. Uh, my uncle, who is currently um, the CEO and president of a YMCA, um, I came to visit him one summer and he said, why not work for the Y this summer? And I said, okay, sure. Um, so I worked for the YMCA during the summertime and had a fantastic time with the children. And I love the character values and the development within the children. And so I decided to go ahead and continue to work for the Y when the fall started. And I've been working with the Y ever since. And so it was my uncle cracking that door open to the Y experience. And I've been sucked in ever since. And um, my children actually attended early learning um, at the YMCA. And that was a phenomenal experience for them at the Andrew and Walter Young YMCA. They got opportunity to work on public speaking, relationship building, um, learning a lot of language and literacy skills. And I do believe, between the YMCA and home. That's why they're so intelligent. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but I'm so grateful and thankful for the YMCA and even the professional development that it has afforded me. Um, so that's a little bit about my Y story. Yeah. Well, and for our listeners, Zarina leads our EA Wear um, Early Learning Center at, um, named in, in part for EA Wear and the Arthur Blank um, Early Learning Center um, because of their generous donation from the Arthur Blank Foundation. Um, and you were hosting a lot of people today, which you commonly do because you really lead our research to practice Early Learning Center, correct? Right, right. Yes. We had 25 visitors from Alabama through the Atlanta Speech School, and they came and they were at awe um, at the children in the classroom and their interactions with the teachers, the story reads, the conversation, um, just the whole center. Um, definitely want to go ahead and toot our home. We have some phenomenal teachers here at EA Ware, as well as the entire YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they showed up and showed up like they do every day, not just for today, but every day. So I'm just That's thankful for that too today. Fantastic. Hey, Robert, tell us about your, your journey. What, what brought you to the Y? Um, I've always been active. I've always, uh, either whether I've been playing sports um, or just a weekend warrior playing sports and recreational leagues. Um, but I just found myself at a uh, somewhat of a standstill um, and, and somewhat of a um, just in a, in, a, in a just stuck in a rut. And um, the heaviest I've ever been, my health uh, wasn't the best. And um, I knew I needed change. Um, I had always been connected to some type of gym, um, but it was primarily the types of the traditional gyms, um, sweat boxes. That I I sometimes call them, um, and uh, I needed something different. I needed, I needed um, something more, and I wanted something that was in the community that I was living in at the time. And, and at that time, I was on in South Fulton, um, on the Southwest Atlanta side, um, in College Park, East Point area. And uh, I found um, the Andrew and Walter Young YMCA. I think it was called the Southwest YMCA at the time, and. Uh, my connection with the people at the YMCA was amazing. Um, I came in there as a, you know, a novice to, uh, in terms of just the community and, and what it had to offer. And I was just embraced just by the, the, the other members that were there and found myself really learning more about how to train and how to work out and what was gonna be the best for me in terms of, um, my journey, my, 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 um, my fitness journey and, uh, literally ended up turning a, a passion into a career. Um, it led me to, um, being there and meeting the people that I met and it led me to, uh, substantial weight loss. It led me to a much better um, feeling about myself, um, much better reports from the doctor. Um, and, uh, literally led me to, 
uh, becoming a Group X instructor at the Young YMCA. And from there, um, you know, tried to expand myself and, and grow my wings a little bit and explore other YMCAs and truly just fell in love with the, with the environment, with the community, um, with everything that the Y stood for. Um, I honestly look at my value system and at, and, and as well as the Y's value system and see a lot of comparisons, um, from to responsibility, uh, caring and, and, and honesty. And so it was just a, a, a great match. Honestly, it was just a great match. And so, um, having the opportunity to now be a wellness director, uh, affords me the opportunity of, um, just touching lives, um, on an everyday basis. Um, as I mentioned before, my entire professional career has always been in social services. And so I find a, a relationship between fitness and social services. Um, just the, 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 the entire spectrum of wellness. Um, so many people just focus on the physical aspect of, of wellness, the fitness piece. Um, but there's so much more to it, uh, the emotional and the, and the mental, um, in my opinion, that are as equal to the, uh, to the physical. And so it was just, again, just a perfect match. Um, every environment that I've been in, every location I've been in, has been very warm and welcoming. And, um, again, how our members are, um, it's a reflection of, of how we treat our members and, and what we, what we enjoy doing for our members. Um, so truly, I, I don't know whoever came up with the saying of, um, if you ever find something that you truly love doing, then mm -hmm. it's not work. Um, so yeah, it's, it's consistent with that. Very consistent. Right. You guys have such meaningful stories and truly fundamental to the people you are today. The wise clearly had a transformational impact in your lives. For me, the why showed up in my children's lives. That was my connection. So, um, both children learned how to swim at the Cowart Y. And then they worked for the Y. They both um, attended camp at Camp High Harbor um, at Lake Alatoona. And so we're, we're campers and then they became camp counselors. And, and then our son, uh, these last two summers, um, started working for the Y as a day camp counselor which um, is, is an entirely different experience than, than what you experience maybe in a resident camp situation. Um, it's, it's really amazing, uh, fun, affordable childcare for um, families across Atlanta. And he's learned so much. And so my why story started with my children. And so I've, I feel like I'm a newbie that I'm still just <laughs> figuring out this why um, ethos. <laughs> I have a lot to learn from both of you, um, and I really look forward to that. I really, really look forward to that. So let's get back to Robert really fast before we close out this episode. Robert, yes. we had dinner together, the three of us, as we started, you know, formulating this plan to start doing this this podcast. And Robert was telling us about his experience at Morehouse, and you originally went to play football, but you mm -hmm. took a, a sharp turn tell us about that. <laughs> sharp turn sharp <laughs> turn uh, <laughs> um so again from new york i uh, came down here to go to morehouse and um had complete aspirations for for playing football uh, just continuing what i had started in new york um with an understanding that my mother was never a fan of me playing football um <laughs> so uh my senior year in high school i had gotten hurt and still wanted to play uh, down here. Um, I didn't do the normal, I wasn't recruited and didn't do the normal um, come down prior to everybody else being down here for any type of um, you know, spring practice or fall practice. Um, but walked on and made the team. Uh, literally the next day was the tryouts for the Morehouse College Glee Club. And I knew that my mother was <laughs> wanted me to, to pursue um, pursue singing opposed to um, playing ball. So uh, I would not be telling the truth if I didn't say that I did not have a, 
slight inkling of <laughs> interest in, in singing. Um, I had heard them prior prior to me getting down here. Um, I heard them in Brooklyn and was amazed at what I heard. And so um, tried out and made the Lee Club. And uh, four year, sang for four years, um, two years as a quartet member. Um, three years, if I count junior quartet as a sophomore, but junior and senior year as a quartet member. Uh, okay. Traveled the country. Um, again, the greatest, um, one of the greatest decisions I've ever made in terms of, of schools and have absolutely no regrets whatsoever in terms of um, my decision to remain with the Glee Club and not play football. It was, it was an amazing, amazing experience uh, traveling. Wow. Again, the people that I met, uh, the sites that I had seen. Um, I, I, I couldn't I couldn't write a better story. Are you willing to sing a few bars or do you want to save them? I mean he has um, a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Russ, okay. our producer okay. might be saying, Okay guys, time is ticking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on the spot, the pressure. Okay. Um Absolutely. I, I don't know He's going. what I would sing. Um okay, why not? Let's let's go. <sighs> um, this is a song that was made famous, uh, written by Dr. Uzi Brown, uh, made famous in the movie School Days um, called I'm Building Me a Home. I'll just sing the open snippet. I'm building me a home. I'm building me a home. I'm building me a home. I'm building me a home, my Lord, this earthly high is starting to decay, and my soul gotta have, praise God, somewhere to stay. Woo! Awesome. <laughs> that I love it. That was fabulous. We'll be hearing more of that. Tune in next time. next time. <laughs> we'll be singing the Village People's rendition of YMCA. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, you guys, thank you so much. This has been so fun. I'm thrilled to oh, do yeah. this with you. Thrilled. You. Our next episode, we're going to be talking with our CEO and president, Lauren Koontz, yes. about her vision yes. for this podcast and about what she thinks really defines the idea of connection at the Y. And then I think right. our third episode, Robert, you have lined up a professor, philosophy professor, right, from Morehouse. Philosophy professor at Morehouse, Mr. Ilya nice. Davis, who I also sang with in the Glee Club. So yeah. Oh wow, a duet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. he didn't. I, I know, I know, I know you. I know we didn't mention that piece in, in the, but yeah, his beautiful voice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we Soloist. look forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to really weigh in from a societal perspective on what it means to yeah. connect. So we look forward to that. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys. Absolutely. Have a great rest yes, of your day. Thank you. This you has been well. awesome. You as well. Thank you for listening to the Why Podcast. To continue the conversation or to find your closest why, please connect with us at ymcaatlanta.org and sign up for our newsletter, Healthy Together. Thank you.